the previous videos, we talked about the complex engineering problems. We also mentioned about the practical side while implementing the complex engineering problems in the course or in a curriculum. The explanations were given verbally. I feel there is a need to complement with good illustrations for better understanding. Bear in mind that what I am sharing now are purely based on my personal understanding as well as the strategies that I would have adopted if managing the program. Different universities may do it differently. We can refer to each other and learn from each other. Now let us discuss a few important points here related to the applications of the complex engineering problem. The big question here is how many complex engineering problems that we need to produce? My answer here it will be depending on the numbers of CO that have the elements of complex engineering problems. How do we know that the CO must or must not incorporate the complex engineering problems? We will see the mappings of the POs. Each POs are meant for each graduate attributes. Bear in mind that some university do not have the POs fully aligned with the graduate attributes in terms of the sequence. Let's say now your POs and the graduate attributes are all in sequence. That means PO1 will attain to WA1. PO2 will be WA2. Sometimes there are university having the numbers of POs different from the WA. So you will need to first identify which WA that the PO is addressing. Now we assume the typical arrangement, the POs are fully in line with the WA. The next thing you need to do, you will need to refer to the statements in the WA. You will see the term complex engineering problem in the statement of WA1 to WA6. With that, based on the mapping, your CO1, 2 and 3 now are being met to PO1, 2 and 3 which are actually addressing the graduate attribute of 1, 2 and 3. Look at those graduate attributes. You know that there is a need for complex engineering problem. In this case, during the first semester you offer the course or the first time that you are undertaking the course, you will need to make sure you do have the complex engineering problems. Since now you have three COs and all the CO will have complex engineering problem, bare minimum you will need to create one each for each COs. What does it mean by one complex engineering problem each? That means you have to fill in this form three times for three different kinds of problems addressing three different COs. And those problems should have been discussed during the teaching and learning activities and there should be relevant assessment to the complexity of those problems. This will be the first step. Taking the second course as an example, again you have three COs. The COs are met to PO1, PO5 and PO10. PO10 is meant for WA10 which do not require complex engineering problem. In this case, only CO1 and CO2 have the complex engineering problem. You will need one complex engineering problem 
for each of CO1 and CO2. As for CO3, you don't have to create the complex engineering problem. So, for the first semester or the first time you are offering the course, as a start, you need to make sure there are complex engineering problems. While preparing the teaching and learning activities as well as the assessment, there will be a minimum of one each for those really require complex engineering problems. And then there are always rooms for improvements. You can take this as a part of CQI. Now you have proven you have complex engineering problem, but it is not thorough enough. You have to look into the CO statements. Let's say now in the CO statement, for CO1, there are components A, B and C. CO2, you have D and E. And CO3, you have one component. So when you design the complex engineering problem, initially you only cover one scope each. Let's say now you have A, D and F in place. You can keep those complex engineering problems. Now fill in those which are not available yet. For the next semester, you can have the B and E in place. And probably the next semester, you will have the C in place. After three semesters, you will have your complex engineering problems covering all the aspects of COs. And that should be bare minimum. At least you are providing a full flash course with all the necessary complex engineering problems. Let's say coming to the second course here. The relevant components are outlined here. Only CO1 and CO2 require the complex engineering problems, which in the first semesters, you have A and C in place. It is still not thorough enough yet. In the following semester, you can add on the complex engineering problems for B and D. So in the first semester, you have two complex engineering problems to make sure the assistance of those. And when come to the second semester onwards, a total of four complex engineering problems are in place, covering all the necessary scopes for the complex engineering problems. Since CO3 do not have WP, you don't have to produce any for CO3. Over the time, if you require a good variety in terms of the complex engineering problems, for the students to have more practices, you can create more. After numerous semesters, you will have a series of complex engineering problems where the students can practice on to train their critical thinking skills and relevant technical skills. Now going to the second question. Do you have to fully abide to this model? Is it that rigid in terms of the numbers of complex engineering problems within a course? I would say that not necessarily. It will be very much dependent on the situations. What is being introduced here is just the concept. When the complex engineering problems are mutually exclusive among each other in attaining the relevant COs as well as the relevant scopes. What if you can create a complex engineering problem covering all three components together? You can actually reduce the numbers of complex engineering problems here. If you can have all the elements together in one engineering problem, you will only require one complex engineering problem. Let's say for this case, 
if you are able to cover A and B for the complex engineering problem, you only require one complex engineering problem to cover both scope. The fundamental principle is still the same. You have to measure all the scopes are covered by the complex engineering problem. Let me give you another scenario. Sometimes you design your assignment to cover more than one CO at the same time. Let's say now you can develop a really good, optimized and perfect assignment based on the situation just now you can cover two COs in one assignment and that particular assignment will be one complex engineering problem coming back to this course now you can merge the CO2 and CO3 into one complex engineering problem being delivered and assessed through the assignment and in the first semester here you only need to design two complex engineering problems in your course. As the second complex engineering problem has already covered both CO2 and CO3. Now by looking at the components of the COs, since you are using one complex engineering problem to cover both CO here, and your assignment has been quite well designed covering all the necessary scopes as defined by the CO you can actually have one complex engineering problems to cater for all this ultimately it will only require two complex engineering problems this is about the optimization process when you deal with complex engineering problem. Now you will see that you have bare minimum complex engineering problems covering all the necessary items within the COs. It is still quite thorough, which is good. Over time, you make the things more and more simplified. That should be your ultimate goal. And normally this will not achieve at one go. It will be simplified, further simplified, and then further optimized over several semesters. On this note, let's say now you are quite well experienced in designing the complex engineering problem. The first semester you are undertaking the course, probably you have the difficulties to cover all the complex engineering problems at once at least you secure the bare minimum let's say you have a d and f in place this is not thorough enough but it's good enough for the first semester then the next semester you upgrade your assignment improving it covering all the necessary components in the co1 make it in one complex engineering problem and then covering CO2s and CO3 all the components in the other engineering problems then after several semesters it become more and more optimized let's say now you would like to optimize it further there is no restriction for you to design one big assignment covering all the COs. In that case, you only require one complex engineering problem to cover all the necessary content of the CO. For the first semester, you may not be able to cover all. At least you secure one item under each CO. Then you add on semesters by semester until it stabilizes, covering all the necessary scopes. This is how you apply the complex engineering problem, working together with continuous quality improvements over the semester. And we will see the progressions and improvements of the program over the years, the qualities of teaching, the quality of assessment can be improved.
and this is in line with the spirits of OBE. Now coming back to the first question, do we have the standard numbers of complex engineering problems per course? By now you should have known the answer. It is very much dependent on your strategy. How good can you optimize the course? And this is a continuous growth process. Make sure you show the continuous improvements of the course, which the CQI committee would like to see, as well as the accreditation body would like to observe the continuous growth. Going back to the educations, the education is not always the more the merrier. Does it mean that more complex engineering problems make you a better lecturer? Not necessarily. The fundamentals of the education is the effectiveness of delivering knowledge and skills. It is only when it is effective that makes you a good lecturer. Now, does it mean that you can design really super hard engineering problem the better? The answer is still no. We go back to the educations. You can actually design simple complex engineering problem. As long as you can effectively train the students to resolve those engineering problem with sufficient depth and critical thinking skills, that should be sufficient. Again, you will see a lot of lecturers complaining about the workload, saying that OBE always makes the things complicated, and it brings to a lot of paperwork. You have to fulfill this and fulfill that. I would say that a true master of OBE can make the complex things simpler. Personally, I feel there is always a cycle. The first half of the cycle, it will be the learning process. This is when you see a lot of things become more and more complex, covering more aspects and take those into the considerations. This is totally okay. But once you reach the requirement, your next step now it will be optimizing the entire thing. You remove the redundant. You make it more efficient and effective. This is when the workload and complexity related to the OBE go down the hill. Many lecturers are still in the first half. They are climbing the hill. The workload piles up, become more and more complex. But as you gain experience, you will find ways to simplify the entire things without compromising the qualities. You will map every single element that you design in your course counts and make it effective. Remove all the redundants. At the end of the day, it will come to a state that minimum amount of work giving you really highly concentrated and thorough coverage of all the requirements of the course like what we have demonstrated just now. Think about it. When you are complaining about OBE making things complicated, this is only half true because you are in the first half of the cycle. What you need to do now is quickly gain your competency and experience. Find a creative way to make the thing simplified. Once everything stabilized, you will find it to be quite easy. And this is the beauty of OBE. By the time you reach to that state, you will appreciate the OBE and probably appreciate what I have shared with you and lighten your perspectives. All the best to you. Let us learn together.